So the delay problem is sum of distances in a uh, tree. And I'm re-recording this because my last recording was rambly and the audio quality was bad, so hopefully this is a little better. The problem says there's an undirected connected tree with n nodes labeled 0 to n minus 1 and n minus 1 edges. Return an array answer of length n, where answer at i is the sum of distances between the ith node in the tree and all other nodes. So we're given this input edges. Uh, so we know, for example, there's an edge between 0 and 1, 0 and 2, so on. And then we're trying to find the sum of all the paths between a node and every other node. So if we look at the output, let's look at when i equals 0, that corresponds to the answer for the 0th node. Uh, which is 8, because we have 1 from 0 to 1, 1 from 0 to 2, and then th uh, 2 from 0 to 3, 0 to 4, and 0 to 5. So we get 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, uh, adds up to 8. And then, for example, um, for node 1, we get 12, because we have uh, a distance of 3 to node 3, 3 to node 4, 3 to node 5, 2 to node 2, and 1 to node 0. All those added together are 12. So I sort of take a two-prong approach here. There's two traversals. There's, uh, once we have the tree, um, parsing the distance from every node to all of its child nodes and all of those child, no child nodes and so on, all the nodes that stem from it, there's parsing that distance. There's finding that distance for every node. And then the second part is finding the distance from every node to every other node through its parent. So I sort of use these um, this euphemism of every node above it, even though you know zero could have a child node one, which could have a child node, and that whole tree could go down here, and we're still kind of talking about quote unquote above node two because it's connected, node two is connected through it, to it through node two's parent. Um, so the second part is filling up this um, table more uh, where more at i is the sum of all distances from a node through its parent, and then less at i is the sum of all distances from a given node through its children. Um, so those are the two traversals. In order to get to those, we actually need to parse this input into a tree that we can use. Currently, edges is not really a usable tree. Um, so the first thing that I do that um, often, very often happens in these sorts of graph problems is uh, turning the edges into an adjacency list. So I create this list of sets, and I use a set instead of a list of lists for, for reasons that um, I'll explain later. Uh, we just connect every node. So ADJ at A, we add B. ADJ at B, we add A for every um, connection. And also, the very first thing I do is I just say n equals n. This is because down here, almost immediately, I start using n to stand for node and p to stand for parent. Um, if I had to type node every single time, or if I had to use another letter, it would just be um, confusing and more effort than this problem already is. So I just use m to mean the length of edges, or the number of nodes as well, and n to mean node uh, in any given context. Anyway, so now we have our adjacency list here, and the problem is this is just a graph. If we tried to parse saying uh, every node, uh, its distance to the nodes stemming from it, um, I don't actually think this is necessary, but for me, it's easier to organize this as, a, as like an actual tree, as an NRA tree instead of just having a graph that you know doesn't have cycles, that has a tree quality to it. Um, although I think that's another probably simpler way to, to do this in retrospect. But, um, but I, do, I do turn it into a tree, uh, and I do find that conceptually to be useful. Um, and the way that I do that is I say, in the end, ADJ at a certain node is going to be its child nodes. So ADJ at 0 should have 1 and 2. ADJ at 2 should have 3, 4, and 5. Uh, and then I, I have this separate array, pair, where pair at i is the node that's the parent of i, the single node that's going to be the parent of i. So when it starts out, every node is its own parent. 
uh, and also every node includes its parent in ADJ from this adjacency list. So for example, two, instead of saying zero is the parent and three, four, and five are the children, two is just this kind of flattened, um, hey, all of these nodes are adjacent to me. This is just a graph. There's no, there's no tree-like quality um, embedded in the format of, of the, of the, or in the data structure itself. So anyway, I, I make this array parent uh, or pair. I say, hey, let's just say root is zero. Uh, here that works, here that works, here that works. It turns out that um, it doesn't actually matter what node is the root. Any node could be the root. The root could be five here. And not only will that always be a valid uh, tree structure, five is the root, two is its only child node, three, four, and zero are two's child nodes, and then zero is one child's node. Uh, or I'm sorry, one is uh, zero's child node. Um, not only does you, does any node have the quality of being able to be the root, uh, but also that doesn't change the answer to this question. Um, so I just decide root will always be zero, uh, even though you can easily think of a test case where you could visualize it not this way. Um, here you could say one is, is the root or zero is the root. It wouldn't matter. Um, I just say zero is always the root. Uh, and then I make a stack to, to perform depth first search. And I say for every child of root, for every node adjacent to root, uh, root, and, and this is why I have a set for ADJ, uh, ADJ at C dot remove root. So for zero, if that's the root for one, ADJ at one doesn't include zero anymore. ADJ at two doesn't include zero anymore uh, because we're saying ADJ from now on is going to represent just the children. Take the root out of that. Uh, but then make the root be the parent of this child node by making pair at C be root. Uh, and then do the same thing for C. So for C, make all of its children uh, not, uh, like for each node from then on, make all of its children not see it as just um, another child node, another connected node, but see it as a parent and not in ADJ. So then what we're left with is these two arrays, ADJ, which means at any given root n, AD, n at ADJ is a set containing all of n's children and pair, where at any given node pair, uh, or at any given node n, pair at n is going to be n's parent. And once we have that structure, uh, for me, that makes it conceptually much easier to perform the following uh, traversals. Although, again, I don't actually think it's fully necessary. I think you, you um, could probably get away with just an adjacency list, but... Uh, but this problem was already finicky enough for me, so... Um, I wanted to make it as simple as possible. And by the way, all these comments, I actually do leave these purely for myself. With problems that are this large, um, it really helps if I feel like I'm going to be debugging it or I feel like I'm going to have to be looking back at code that I don't quite remember too well um, to state exactly what a line is doing if it's like kind of confusing, like right here. Um, and this part of the code does get more confusing. So the first thing to do is to fill up this array less with the sum of distances from a node to all nodes less than it, uh, or to all nodes that stem from it. Uh, and I do this with a, a depth first search traversal. I do it recursively uh, because uh, it's a little easier for me to conceptualize and because in order for, let's say, less at zero to be calculated, you need less at one and less at two to be calculated. And in order for less at two to be calculated, you need less at three, four, and five to be calculated in their entirety before you return to, to less at two and calculate that. Um, so the base case here is if not ADJ at n, which means if ADJ at n, the length of that is zero, aka there's no child nodes to a node, then we know it's a leaf node. So we say less at n equals zero, zero. And the way that I've um, formed the syntax here is less is not an array of numbers representing the sum of all paths to nodes stemming from a given node. It's an array of the number of nodes stemming from a given node 
and the sum of all paths to all nodes stemming from a given node. So, and I represent these with num and dist. So when we say, if not ADJ at n less at n equals zero, zero, what that means is uh, there are no nodes below a leaf node and there is no total pathing. The total path amount is zero to all of those no nodes. Um, if we look at, for example, what let's say uh, less at zero here should be, we know there's one, two, three, four, five nodes stemming from zero in total. So less at n at zero, this first um, part of the tuple should be five. And then less at n at uh, one, the second tuple uh, should be eight um, because the total number of paths is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and because there's no parent node to this root, uh, the root will always have uh, uh, the entirety of its paths stem from its child nodes. Um, but anyway, um, so we go through, We the first thing we do is we say for each child perform a depth first search on that. Don't bother um, trying to calculate a node when any of its child nodes are not calculated yet. Um, and, you know, we can assume if we build depth first search correctly, that then uh, this just works. Now all, all of less at C's um, information is true and correct. So then we say, okay, well, what's the number of nodes stemming from a node? It's going to be the number of nodes stemming from each of that node's children plus one for each child. So if we look at zero... Uh, num plus plus equals less at c is zero plus one. That means that um, it's going to be all of one's children, which is none, so zero, plus one for the node one itself. And then all of two's children, which is three, uh, but then we have to include two itself. So three plus one is four, is all of the nodes um, stemming from zero through two. So then total we get five when we iterate through uh, all of zeros child nodes and then distance is a little more confusing to calculate um, but we say hey the distance from a given node to all of the nodes stemming from it is just the distance from that node it's the distance from it's a given child node to all of the nodes stemming from that so if we look at the distance from zero to three four and five um, we start by looking at the distance from 2 to 3, 4, and 5. And we say, well, the distance from 2 is 1, 1, 1. So that's 3. The distance is 3 total. But it's not total for 0. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 total through this, through this 2. So how do we get 7 from 3? Um, well... We start by compiling the distance from each child node to all of the nodes stemming from that child node, so less at C at 1, uh, the, the sum of total distances. But then we have to realize, actually, for every single one of these nodes, it's one further, because we're not, every single step, instead of just um, pathing from 2 to that, we're pathing from the thing next to 2 to each of those. So instead of a path, uh, uh, a path length of 1, 1, and 1, it's a path length of one, two, two, and two um, to each of these nodes. So for every single one of those nodes, we have to add one. And another way to put that is dist plus equals num. So we're adding uh, all of the nodes below. We're adding the total number of nodes um, stemming from a given node to the total uh, pathing distance. And, uh, yeah, and then we set less at n equals num and dist. And uh, the thing I was going to say is you can argue that this is sort of where dynamic programming comes into it. Um, there's a world where you try and say, what if we just calculated every path? What if we said 0 to 1 is 1, plus 0 to 3 is 2, plus 0 to 4 is, and then 2 to 3 is this, 2 to 4 is that. The problem is if you had uh, 3 times 10 to the fourth nodes, um, this is O of n squared, and uh, that would exceed the time limit easily. O of n squared is not good enough. 
Um, whereas this traversal that we just did is all of n. Creating the adjacency list is all of n. Um, setting each thing to have a parent and a child list uh, is all of n. And indeed, this last part is all of n too, this, this uh, breadth first search. So once we're at this point, we've filled out less. We now know for any given node, the number of nodes stemming from it and the total sum path to nodes to all of the nodes stemming from it. And now the other missing piece that we need is for any given node, the total path through its parent. That's the only other question mark here. Once we have that, and I, I call that more, once we have that, we can just we can just add the two. And if we look down at the end here, a little spoiler alert, all we're gonna do is just return less at i at one plus more at i at one. And if we remember from less, less at i at zero is the total number of nodes stemming from a node, and less at i at one is the total path sum to all the nodes stemming from a given node. Um, and it's the same with more. More has the exact same syntax. Um, and the base case is the root, because the root doesn't have a parent. Um, there's no nodes above it, and there's no path to any of those nodes. There's no distance. That's zero. Um, so then we add each child node to, to the queue, add each of root's child nodes to the queue, and we perform it up for a search. So we say n is the node, p is the parent of the given node, which we know will always be there because we didn't include root. Um, and then let's start by calculating the number of nodes above, again, in quotation marks, because for example, here, one would be considered above two if we're looking at two, because we're going through the parent. Um, and similarly, if we're looking at one, all the nodes quote unquote above it that aren't stemming from it would be zero, two, three, four, and five. Um, so to calculate all the nodes above it, uh, what do we do? We look at, uh, all the nodes above the parent. Um, so for root, that would be zero. Uh, for two, that would be two, it would be one and zero. Uh, plus all of the nodes below the parent. So for zero, that would be one, two, three, four, five. Um, but then the problem is we don't want to include the nodes below a given node. So if we're looking at two, if we just said more at P at zero plus less at P at zero, that would be every node above zero plus every node stemming from zero. Uh, but because less already is accounting for every node stemming from a, different, a given node, we don't want to count those. So we wouldn't want to count three, four, and five. So we say minus less at n at zero. Uh, and then we're kind of taking those out. And if you think about it, we kind of would theoretically want to take out the node itself because we don't have any path to our own node, but it doesn't really matter because we would also want to include plus the uh, parent node. So that would just be plus one, minus one, and those cancel out. So we say uh, the number of nodes uh, through the parent is the number of the parent's nodes through its parent plus the number of parent's nodes stemming from it minus the number of nodes stemming from the current node. And then on this setup, we don't have to worry about it again. However, we do have to worry about dist, which like the, the, the total sum path to all nodes through the parent node, which is a lot messier. Um, so I, I think there's multiple ways you could write this. I wrote it as explicitly as humanly possible. So I said, uh, it starts out as one. You will always have the distance to the parent node um, because this breadth first search doesn't include root itself. So it's one because you have the parent node. And then we're going to add all of the nodes through the parent node's parent node. So all of the nodes uh, at more at P at zero, all of the nodes above the parent, zone, the parent node. Uh, but then because we're one more away from all of those, we also want to say plus, uh, sorry, the total sum path through the parent node plus all of the nodes through the parent node. So we're taking the total sum path from Let's say two is the current node, zero is the parent node, zero is P, uh, more at zero. Uh, and then let's assume there's some tree structure up here. Um, all of those nodes, all of their sum distance to zero, we're taking that number and adding it to 
adding one to it for every one of those nodes. So we're adding the number of nodes above zero to the total path sum that they have to zero. And then we're getting the total, the total path sum that all of these nodes have to two. So we're adding that. So now we have the path to the parent node, to all of the things through the parent node's parent node, anything up there. Uh, and then the last part is we have to say, I literally gate it with an if statement here, because I think there's a lot of cases where, or there's a lot of situations where this would evaluate to false. We say, if the length of ADJ at P is greater than one. So we're saying, if there's more than one child node to the parent node, AKA, if the current node is the only child node, then you can just, that's all the calculation you need to do. But if there's another child node to the parent node, then you have to count that as well. Um, and the way that it does that is uh, dist plus equals less at p at zero plus less at p at one. So we're saying step once to the parent node, and then for every single node below the, every single path below the parent node, add that. So we're sort of saying, what's the total path sum from all of the nodes stemming from zero to zero? Now add one for each of those, because then we have to take one step to get to two. Um, or if we look, let's say one is the current node and zero is the parent node. What's the total number of path, what's the total path sum from zero to one, two, three, four, and five? It's eight. Now add one for each node to get to one, um, because we have to step from one, for example, if we look at three, instead of that being two away from zero, it's three away from one. Instead of two being one away from zero, it's two away from one. So they're all gonna be exactly one more, so we can just say dist plus equals less at p at zero plus less at p at one, just sort of like we've been doing. Um, and that's why I've been storing with more and less uh, tuples. And I think that's sort of actually the key to this problem is that you have to keep track of um, not only the total path sum to any given node, but the total number of nodes going th that are gated by any given node f to any other node. Um, or in this case, the total number of nodes that are stemming from a node or that are, that are um, above a given node. But then the problem with this, for example, if we look at one, um, okay, the total path sum we want is gonna be three, six, nine, 11, 12. That's going to be the total path sum for one. And we can see that here in the output that I equals one yields 12. Um, and if this is the way that we're calculating it, we're saying, uh, well, we have one to get to zero. So distance is immediately one plus anything above zero, which is zero. So that doesn't matter because zero is the root um, plus anything below zero. Uh, the problem um, and accounted for even because we have to take this one step to get to zero. So it's looking really good, but the one problem is that um, it's also including stepping back through node one. So this would yield 14, I believe, because we'd have one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, and so you can see, well, we actually, we want everything stemming from zero, except specifically the current node, everything stemming from the parent node, except things stemming from the current node. So we say dist minus equals uh, less at n at one. So all the paths through the current node plus less at n at zero times two, bit shifted by one just means times two. And the reason why we do this is because let's say we're looking at two again, and zero is the parent node and two is the current node. Uh, if we just stopped right here and we said, okay, great, add everything that's going through the zeroth node, that would, not only are we accounting for three, four, and five, and two when we don't want to because that's accounted for by less already, um, we're actually stepping twice. We're saying two, okay, step to zero, step to two, step to three um, in order to get to three. So really that's actually two extra steps for every single node here. Um, which we don't want. So that's why here we're multiplying the number of nodes below the parent by two, uh, or I'm sorry, the number of nodes below the current node by two, rather than in every other situation, we're sort of accounting for with just less at n at zero plus less at n at one, here we're doubling it. 
Uh, and then similarly, if, you know, once we take these out, once we take all the paths from the current node to the parent node, back to the current node, to all the child nodes, we actually are going to wind up with exactly two more than we want because we're including one path that we don't want, which is from the current node to the parent node, back to the current node itself. So the last thing we do is dist minus equals two. And then we continue the breadth first search and we set more at n to be the appropriate um, values. And then once we have uh, more and less, we just um, put them together. So we just return less at i at one, which is the total the total sum of all of the distance, all the distances from a given node to all nodes stemming from it, plus more at i at one, which is the total sum of all distances from a given node to all of the nodes going through its parent. Um, and we return that list. It seems like the time complexity is pretty, pretty consistently above average here which is always nice to see. I don't think it's the most optimal thing you can get. Um, but taking a look at the at the um, time complexity, it's just O of n. I mean, creating the adjacency list is always O of n. Uh, this is O of n. This depth first search is O of n. And then this breadth first search is O of n. And the key is um, keeping track of this extra value. Not only are we keeping track of the total path sum, we're keeping track of the total number of nodes in any given direction. Um, and I think that's part of what makes this problem difficult. Um, this definitely does. I, I definitely just kept hitting submit and waiting for a new corner case to challenge this algorithm until it was exactly right. Um, but I think in a more abstract cognitive level, the really difficult thing here that this problem challenges is uh, your ability to understand exactly what data structures you're working with. Understand exactly, I have a list of edges. I'm going to turn that into an adjacency list. I'm going to turn that adjacency list into a, a, some form of a tree. Um, and then, okay, I have a tree. I'm going to have this array that shows exactly one aspect of the answer that I want. And if you tried to calculate more before you calculated less, it wouldn't work. So you have to do it in this order. And then also realizing, actually, it's not good enough for this array to just be an array of, of integer values. You need to have it be an array of tuples um, because there's there's an important extra piece of info. There's an important int for every node that you have to keep track of, which is not just the path sum, but the number of nodes uh, more or less than it. And I think that requires a lot of uh, confidence in the data structures that you're building. But that's the daily problem. It's a well-earned hard, but I do think it's a fun problem.